Africa is like, uh, you know what it is, you know, it's like the birthplace. When I, I've only been to Africa like uh, three times. I've been there once for my birthday, and I've been there like twice for like a corporate show, sort of like, sort of like what we're doing here today, and that's where I met you at. Let's go straight to it. People are scared. There's, there's horror stories about Africa that's, that's out of this world. There's, there's stories that you get on the plane, you get bit by a mosquito. You, if, you, if you're driving down the street, you're gonna get, there's horror stories that scared people from going to Africa before hip hop was around. And um, when I finally got there, you know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, you never gonna have enough security, so I didn't bring much. I probably brought one person with me. And you know, brought my jewelry. If they're gonna take it, they're gonna take it. You know, it's theirs anyway. So I went there and I figured out um, there's been a lot of lies told to American people about what's going on over there. And one thing about us African Americans and, and Africans, we don't communicate. We don't talk, we don't see a reason to talk, we don't, we don't even get along. There's a lot of Africans that don't like African Americans at all. They look down on us, they got their own little racial names for us. You know, we've been pulled apart for years. So I, I mentioned a lot about Africa because, you know, when I grew up, I grew up in a time like of, uh, um, Bob Marley was saying a lot of stuff. I wanted to know why he was talking about Africa Unite, and I wanted to know what Roots was about. So out of my own curiosity, I just started to learn stuff, and at that time, the 5% nation was on the rise. So I got some of those lessons, and um, I couldn't keep up with it, so I just kept growing and growing. And my name is uh, Arabic, uh, Egyptian, Nasir. So that already made me start to dig into where we come from and why we're in the position we're at. But to get back to your question, man, people scared. They scared to go over there and uh, they have horror stories, man. And I think um, some, of that, some of those Africans need to make an effort to show us that when we come there that we're going to be all right. And um, I've been in Nigeria and it almost made me cry to look at the conditions of most of the people there. And uh, there's no connection. No connection and we got a lot of work to do so it's beyond hip-hop you know but I think hip-hop is an answer to get us to start communicating and start rebuilding our long-lost family between Africa and, Af and America I think this is the beginning if you get more people like yourself coming over here and you get those brothers over there to realize when we coming over here we're making major moves we're bringing serious artists to this, this place we got to change it we got to change the way the conditions are in Africa. We got to. And um, hip-hop artists, we can start by making, raising some voice, but Nas can't go to South Africa and get 100,000 people like Bono. There's a lot, of, a lot of story behind that to why he can and Nas can't. Well, Nas should be able to get 200,000 people to come out. Let me not shit on myself because maybe I can get 300,000. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to need y'all help. You know what I'm saying? I think we have to all take the responsibility to say that we want to make a difference. Let's not talk about it, let's really be about it. I don't know if that answered your question. This is a long conversation. Yo, and I also want to weigh in too because you did kind of end the comment with what, and so then Pharrell ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to weigh in on that a little bit too. And, and uh, to, to, to Buck's point, we do really work hard. We're like on the road all the time. And you know what, I'm so exhausted. I don't know if this is like, I don't know if you've seen Fight Club. I don't know if like these guys are imaginary on stage right now and I'm really sleeping or I'm really in a press conference right now. Because we're like exhausted. We're overly worked. And because, you know, the recession is where it is right now, we've definitely got to work a lot harder. And so when, you know, we ask for a ton of money, it's because we are spending our time. See, what people don't realize is that like, you know, after this press conference, you'll either go back to your day job or you'll go home and do whatever you got to do. We have to continue to do this like, you know, 15, 16 hours a day. So when you're working so hard physically and mentally, because remember, you also have to create. You're not just like, you know, this is not a Broadway play where you learn your lines. You have to create that stuff. 
So like when we ask for the money that we ask for, it's because we're like really working hard. And to get to the original part, I've been to Africa too. And I loved it and I was very surprised to see snow. I was very surprised that I needed a bomber jacket when I was in Cape Town, it was freezing, <laughs> right? But at the same time, there are a lot of rumors and there are a lot of myths, but you have to understand that like a lot of it is supported by the images we see on TV. The leadership over there has to change too. And they need to strengthen themselves in terms of the infrastructure and not like sell everything to China. Because another thing that people are not really covering here is that China in like, you know, the next uh, 10 to 15 years is gonna own Africa because they're buying everything up over there like for pennies on the dollar. No one wants to talk about that. But they'll just say, oh, you know, African Americans, you know, you don't have this perception of Africa. Well, you know what? You're not providing us with anything that we can see that looks particularly advertising. It was only until I went to Durban and I was like, oh, wow, this is nice. Or when I went to South Africa and I was like, oh, okay, this is it's really interesting. And you get to see people of color with wealth. That's not the images we see. You know what we see 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. We see babies, big stomachs, swollen heads, and flies. And we also know artists that come back home with horror stories. They just, it's, it's a yeah, scary. The artists tell you that. The artists come back. They come back and tell you that. They, they, they basically that. told me never go to Nigeria. Yeah. And stuff like that. The same person probably. Well, let, let's do this because I think before, before we go branch too far off, which no, I think no, is a no, but I mean, when you bring something up like that, I'm going to be a little bit sensitive because, I mean, that's serious. It's, it, you know, I am a descendant. That's going to be mixed. Nonetheless, all of us are after being over here for a couple of hundred years. But, but I think it's, but it's, it's relative. Yeah, and absolutely. I and I think, too, the fact that you're here today because of Smirnoff bringing you here, and I know they endorse your, your radio show and your TV show, that's an example of how we can start crushing the stereotypes and showing the truth in the images of Africa and how artists could benefit from being there and how Africa could benefit from those artists. Yeah, but I don't listen and forgive me for going too long, but all I'm saying is, I mean, it, it's, it's not rocket science that anybody can just look at this and go, okay, well, what's the difference? Because you're doing it for Smirnoff here. As Nas said, when he went, it was a corporate event. So what's the difference between being over there and being here? And I would like to, you know, defend my position as an artist and a person who asks for certain things and, you know, and, and, and all of our basic requirements to just let people know that there's really no difference. If you know Smirnoff would have had to stay in Africa, it would have been the same thing. But when you you know you mention the difference and the distance between us, I'm going to have to defend myself.